Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Pigskin Addicts. Back again with another video. So I wanted to jump straight into the Titans versus the Chargers this Sunday live from SoFi Stadium. Now, this is pretty much a must win for both teams, right? Both teams are now sitting at seven and six, uh, but Tennessee is leading in their division. So they are not really, you know, fighting for a playoff spot right now. They do need to continue winning in order to uh, seal the division up. But as of right now, they are in a playoff spot. This is a must win for the Chargers, though, to continue their playoff hopes. And to be honest with you guys, this should be a win, right? This should be a win. And I, I, I know that I've said that there is no easy wins. And, you know, the way that the Chargers were playing, there was definitely not going to be any easy wins. But without a doubt, this should be a win. Without a doubt, 100%. Tennessee as a team, um, they are very unimpressive. Uh, the fact that they have seven wins right now is very uh, surprising to me. When you watch them on tape, they have um, very, very, very poor team speed. And when I say team speed, I'm talking about skill position players on both sides of the ball, right? So you're talking about wide receivers, running backs, um, and then DBs, right? So they, their team speed just really isn't there. Um, they really don't have anything to threaten the Chargers with uh, besides Derrick Henry. Uh, so that's what I want to get into now. So uh, without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's get into some of these numbers and uh, let's talk ball. Now, uh, the Tennessee Titans, they have the 29th ranked offense. Uh, the 25th ranked uh, defense, um, they are 29th in passing and uh, 16th in rushing. So across the board, this tells you that this team is not great. Uh, they they just aren't, right? And, you know, having rankings this low, this late in the season lets you know that this team, they're not world beaters, right? Now, are they capable of coming into SoFi and pulling an upset? Yes, they are, 100%. But... You know, I think a lot of things have to go their way in order for that to happen. Um, 29th in offense and 25th in defense, that is, you know, near the bottom, right, on both sides of the ball. Again, Derrick Henry is pretty much the only only weapon that they have. And when you go and you look at his numbers from the past uh, four or five games, they haven't really been that impressive. Um, I don't think that he has went over 100 yards um, more than once in the past few games. And uh, I think he went over 100 yards last week. He had a, a big 54-yard uh, run, I think, against the Jaguars. But if you take that run out, uh, he has been pretty pedestrian by his, you know, standards. He is a guy that, you know, puts up 100 yards, you know, two touchdowns a game, on, you know, pr pretty much consistently. And he's done that throughout his career. Uh, but this last stretch of about five games, it really hasn't been that impressive. So if the Chargers are able to stop him, obviously that is going to be easier said than done. You have to tackle this big human um, guys just have to, you know, will it. They have to want to tackle him. That's that's basically what it's going to boil down to. The Titans' offensive line is not very good, um, and they're a little undersized. So I expect the Chargers' defensive line, uh, in particular, Breeden Fajoko, number 96, I expect him to be the X factor in this game. He has been fa fantastic stopping the run uh, the past, you know, month or so. So I expect a lot more out of that from him against an undersized uh, offensive line. Now, obviously, Derrick Henry is going to be – you know, a tough, it's, 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 it's going to be tough to stop him, right? Even though he hasn't been all that great these past, you know, five games, past, past month and a half, to be honest with you, he's still going to be a tough, tough person to stop. But here's the thing with Derrick Henry, right? I think his numbers really don't tell the entire story when it comes to team success. Um, he can put up 120 yards against the Chargers, but I think the key here and the key, the key that is going to be the most important thing to look for is how many times does he run the ball? How many uh, carries does it take to get to 120 yards? How many carries does it take to get to 150 yards if, if he's going to be there, right? How many carries is it going to take? The Chargers have to stop the splash run plays. Um, earlier in the season, they were letting a lot of 50, 60, even a 75-yard run happen. So they were letting a lot of big splash plays happen on the ground. If they can keep Derrick Henry to, you know, his, his longest rush be, you know, maybe 14 to 15 yards, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Derrick Henry can really hit you and he can really hurt you when it comes to spa uh, splash plays because, that allows the Titans to really get into their play action game. And as far as their passing goes, that's when they have the most success is, is in play action. Ryan Tannehill's uh, straight drop back is not good. He's not very good at all. 
He's not good outside of the numbers. This is something that I brought up in uh, the live stream, the post-game live stream against the Dolphins, and uh, even in the video that I did yesterday. Um, you want to make Ryan Tannehill throw outside the numbers as much as you can. If you're able to do that, you're going to be able to have some success against him because he is not, number one, he's not that accurate. Number two, he doesn't have, you know, all that much arm talent, right? He's pretty average across the board. So if you're able to get him outside of his comfort zone, you're going to be able to have success. Again, I mentioned the offensive line. They're not that great. I think the Chargers are going to be able to generate a lot more pressure this game than they have over the previous five to six games. I think they can get some pressure. Um, I'm looking for Khalil Mack to have a pretty good game against some tackles that are not, not, not great in, in, in pass protection. So, I'm looking for more pressure. I'm looking for more quarterback hits. I'm looking for more sacks. Um, and I'm looking for the Chargers to stop Derrick Henry. And I don't care how many yards he has. As long as he doesn't have a big run, as long as he doesn't have a run over 30, 40 yards, the Chargers will be fine because they're going to be able to get the Titans in third down. That is where the Titans struggle. They struggle in third down. Ryan Tannehill struggles in third down. And they don't have a lot of team speed. Traylon Burks, their uh, rookie wide receiver, um, I don't think he's going to play. Uh, he's been injured pretty much all season long, so he is banged up. Uh, they really don't have a lot of speed. Like I said, outside of Derrick Henry, they really don't have a lot to you know, threaten the Chargers with. So if the Chargers play good fundamental defense and if they are able to go right back to the man-to-man -man that they did against uh, Miami, if the Chargers are able to pull that out on third down, make Ryan Tannehill make window throws, tight window throws, he will throw you the ball, right? He will turn the ball over. He will throw interceptions. So I think the Chargers got to pull that out on third down. Um, and I think if they do that, they'll be fine against a very subpar uh, Titans offense overall. Another big key for the Chargers is going to be third down. Um, that's something that I have talked about for quite a bit now. Uh, third down defense has been a problem all season long for the Chargers. Um, they were very good uh, last week against Miami. Um, I want that to continue. And the only way that's going to continue is if the Chargers have a plan on third down to cover Robert Woods. Robert Woods has been in the league for a while. He is Mr. Reliable. Um, I've been a big fan of Robert Woods since he was at USC. Uh, he is just a guy. He he comes in, he gets his work done, and he produces every team that he's with. Right? He, I think he started his career in Buffalo. Uh, he obviously went to the Rams, uh, played in a couple Super Bowls, won one, and then now he's with the Titans, and he is their guy on third down. He's reliable. Um, he's a great, great route runner. He has you know very good hands, and he's a guy that can get open on third down. So I think the Chargers are going to have to have a plan for him. Um, you know, I, I I think you're going to have to you know look at the ebbs and flows of the uh, of the game uh, to decide if you're going to have to double him on third down. I think. Michael Davis can step up to the challenge and handle him on third down. He did a very good job against Tyreek Hill, uh, and he's playing the best football of his career right now. So I think, you know, that's the guy I want on Robert Woods. You know, if it's third and seven, third and eight, he's the guy I want on Robert Woods because I feel he has the physical tools, and, uh, you know, he has, you know, really been coming into his own at the, at the corner uh, cornerback position. Um, and he's also able to travel, too, um, both sides of the field. So, I want him on Robert Woods, man-to-man, -man, third down, third and seven, third and eight. Um, if the Chargers do that and then if they're able to really shut down in the middle of the field just like they did with Tua, um, I think they're going to be fine defensively. I, I honestly do. This uh, Titans offense is, you know, a pop gun offense. That's the way that I describe it. When you watch them on film um, – it's Derrick Henry or nothing, pretty much. And, you know, if Derrick Henry gets going, then it allows the play-action game to get going. And maybe, you know, they can have some some shot plays in, in the pass game. But if Derrick Henry is not going, their passing game is not going. So their whole entire existence as a team depends on Derrick Henry. If he gets going, then all the other systems can get activated. But if he's not going, then nothing else really is you know, working. And Ryan Tannehill is not a guy. He's not going to go up and down the field. Um, he's not going to, you know, be the guy that's throwing for 400 yards and four touchdowns and winning games. He's just not. He's not that guy. He's never been that guy. Um, he's the ultimate game manager. He's done a, a pretty good job in Tennessee. But again, when it is a must win game, you have to game plan, you have to focus in, and you have to be detail oriented. So I want the ball in Ryan Tannehill's hands as much as possible. I, I would like to see him throw the ball 
more than 30 times. If he throws the ball more than 30 times, I think that's a good indication that the Chargers are doing a pretty good job in the run game. And, uh, you know, hopefully that will lead to success on, on, on defense and hopefully it leads to a, uh, a win. Now, quickly, before I wrap this up, offensively, um, I think things are going to be a little bit more simple for the Chargers. Number one, uh, I want to see more jumbo sets. The Chargers came out last week uh, in a few jumbo sets, and I was surprised. That is the one thing I think um, Joe Lombardi can call that is foolproof. That really is foolproof. And if he's looking to save his job, I would come out with more jumbo sets, right? More, more jumbo sets. Two tight ends, a fullback, run the ball, go play action. Um, there's a lot you can do out of that. But if you get the run game going, then, you know, you're you're pretty much playing downhill at that point. So, I would like to see more jumbo packages. Um, obviously, this team, this this uh, Titans team, they're not great defensively, uh, but they do have you know some guys up front that can make some plays. But if you get the run game going, you can negate what they do. You can negate their pass rushing, um, and you can negate how much of an impact they have on the game. So I would like to see more jumbo sets from the, for the Chargers. Um, that would really help out, and that would take a lot of pressure off of Justin Herbert. Number two. The Chargers have to take shots on offense. Uh, Mike Williams is back. Keenan Allen is back. Uh, you know, you obviously still have Josh Palmer. You're going to have to take some shots downfield. Um, Donald Parham is going to play on Sunday. Chargers got to take some shots downfield. This is the second worst pass defense in the league. They give up a bunch of yards. They give up a lot of touchdowns. This is the pass defense that you want to attack down the field. Especially if the Chargers are able to get even just a little something going in the run game. Play action is going to be huge. They're going to be able to take shots. I want to see Mike Williams down the field. I want to see a bunch of shot plays, right? Whether or not they convert them or not, I just, I just want to see them because this is where the Titans are weak. This is the Titans version of the Chargers run defense, right? This is where they struggle. They need a bunch of help. Um, you can almost, you know, bet money that their first the Titans first round pick is going to be somebody in the secondary you can almost bet that this year they need a lot of help they have not been very good um, their zone coverage is very 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 soft and when they go man they get beat a lot so the, the Chargers are going to have their opportunities to go deep I want to see Mike Williams down the field I want to see at least four deep shots to him maybe two in the first half maybe two in the second half whatever however they split it up it doesn't matter uh, but I want to see some stuff down the field because these DBs, they struggle. They struggle mightily. Uh, they don't communicate very well. There is a lot of confusion going on when you watch the tape, uh, especially this this past week against Jacksonville. They got shredded. Trevor Lawrence really shredded them, and um, you know they were struggling and they were frustrated. So I expect some more deep shots. Um, you know, especially if the Chargers can get it blocked up on the offensive line. If they can get it blocked up on the offensive line. Keep a tight end in, uh, you know, maybe bring in another lineman to help out with the blocking scheme. But they can get it blocked up up front. If Herbert has just a little bit of time, I think they're going to be able to have success down the field. So, Joe Lombardi, you got to take shots down the field. No stick routes, uh, none of the boring vanilla stuff. You got to go down the field because this team will allow you to go down the field on them. And last but not least, you look. I'm looking for the wide receivers to eat. I'm looking for Mike to eat. I'm looking for Keenan to eat. I'm looking for Josh Palmer to eat. I'm also looking for Donald Parham to give us a better red zone target. 6A in the red zone. I expect him to have some type of impact. Um, his presence is going to be needed. Uh, he is pretty decent in run blocking as well, too. But I think he can give the Chargers a big, big boost in the red zone. Having Mike Williams is obviously, you know, a... a Blessing, right? Having him back, but to have Donald Parr and be able to work the middle of the field in the red zone um, against linebackers who are, you know, a little small, a little shorter in stature, it's going to play a lot of dividends. I, I, I really believe that. Um, all Donald Parham has to do is catch it. He will drop some passes, uh, just like Gerald Everett, but all he has to do is catch it. The The opportunities will be there. So there is a lot. There's a lot of opportunity for the Chargers to win here. The Chargers, obviously, you know, they have to be detail-oriented, kind of like they were last week. They have to take this seriously, um, and they have to come out with some, some pep in their step. They have to come out and establish it very, very early. If they're able to do that, I think that they will be fine. Again, this is a must-win. This is a must-win to keep afloat in the playoffs. Um, you know, the Chargers are at a point right now where 
they are getting closer, getting closer. It's not there yet officially, but they're getting closer to controlling their own destiny. The Chargers win out. If they continue to win out, they are going to be in the playoffs. Um, and they're going to have a pretty favorable matchup, right? Uh, no matter if it's the seventh seed or the sixth seed. Um, I think the, the fifth seed is, is, is pretty much out of reach. If, if uh, Cincinnati, if they win one more game, then I think it's out of reach. But, you know, at least the sixth seed, I think they're, that, that is a doable doable thing at this point right now so they have to continue to just execute be detail oriented pay attention to details um and don't let up keep your foot on the gas do not let up and if they get up by you know a few touchdowns or whatever continue continue to execute the more they execute um in these games the more that the more good tape that they're able to put out you know they are going to start building momentum, right? And then you start getting guys back from the IR. Uh, things are going to look, you know, pretty pretty good around the corner. So I want them to go out and play a 60-minute game. I want them to play a complete game. I want them to be locked in and uh, not let up. And, you know, again, this is not a great team that they're going to play, but the Titans are capable of beating the Chargers if the Chargers allow them to. But I think the Chargers are going to be fine, and uh, I'm looking forward to a win. But... That was my breakdown for Tennessee at the Chargers uh, live on Sunday. So, you know, again, hopefully this uh, results in a win. Um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling pretty confident about this game. So um, I'm not too worried. And, uh, you know, again, hopefully they, they, they pull out the W and keep the uh, playoff momentum going. But that is all I got for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for all of the support. I really, really appreciate it. Shout out to all my new subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Shout out to all my old subscribers. I really appreciate you guys too. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit the button below me and uh, hit that bell notification as well too. And don't forget to smash the like button on your way out as well too. I'll be back again with more content tomorrow and uh, until next time.